Good morning. It is June 13th, and today we're going to talk about inflation and a look at a few securities that you're probably tracking. So first, the May CPI data pretty much you know, locks in a pause this week by the Fed. It also might let them keep their year-end projected Fed funds rate level by adjusting the dot plot. So, you know, keeping things smooth, not showing ramps in it, not showing declines. The, you know, near-term data is projected by our friends over at 42 Macro. It's really pointed to darker clouds on the horizon. June's going to have a rough time with base effects. So what is that? It's where you're climbing from for month-over-month -month calcs for both headline and core CPI. Headline at plus 1.2% and core at plus 0.6%. But then they're expecting a big decline in base effects in July. So remember, that gets reported in August. It's going to be on the 10th. So July numbers coming out in August, the headline is going to be 0% month over month, and core will be 0.3% month over month. So the CPI is going to make it hard for the Fed to see a path towards 2% inflation, when it may seem like it's stalling out at more than two times that level, call it 4% inflation. So 42 Macro is giving us three potential outcomes that I thought I'd share with you. First, the core PC inflation is unlikely to get even close to 2% until we're in a recession, or if not well, after a recession ends. Two, there could be a soft landing in the economy that's going to result in a soft landing inflation. Seems a little doubtful, but it's possible. And then three, the Fed needs a recession to re-anchor the stationary mean of U.S. inflation time series around 2%. Meaning, how do we get back to thinking like 2% or below is normal? Is it going to be like, well, 2% is the new normal, and it, you know, and it's going to be sometimes higher than that? Because the current policy path risks, again, that 2% being the new floor. So not being able to dip below it, but keeping that at a level that at least we're at. Markets obviously are hoping for that, you know, door number two, meaning the soft landing everywhere. And that's really the only path that keeps that risk asset party going. We're seeing that a little bit today with these inflation numbers. Although the market dipped a little bit, it's a little bit back up. I think people are trying to read through these CPI numbers and then figure out what's going on. So let's jump over to Longbow and see where the trading ranges are telling us and also take a peek at what happened to Ethereum from yesterday's video. So here we're on Longbow and I've given you a few things that I'm sure that you're tracking. Shy, so that's the one to three year treasury bonds. Obviously, it's bearish because as rates go up, um, they go down. Same thing with TLT, um, but they're in the middle of the range. Nothing to do there. We may see this being moves um, tomorrow. We'll have to see. But then the SPY neutral. Q's really close to the top end of the range. If you're a longbow expert, you've seen on other tabs that the XLK is actually overbought today. So it makes sense that the Q's are probably nearing that as well because there's some similar companies in each of those ETFs. So you've got a six to one downside on that name. Again, that's for just trading ranges with the Fed coming out uh, this week with what's happening with the dot plot, what their expectations are for interest going forward. You know, this isn't something I'd say, oh, you're banking on with normal trends. This isn't just technical trends when you have a big event coming up. So be careful to note of that. But what you're saying is you're getting priced in a lot right now. Russell, middle end of the range, and then Ethereum. Remember that? It was <laughs> sold off yesterday. Um, I'm going to just refresh right here because um, I've had this open for a little bit. Um, but remember the Ethereum we were talking about yesterday was the low end of the range. So if I'm clicking on here, um, what I'm going to see is a bit of a bounce. So you know this just shows you very short term. Hit the low end of the range, we're bouncing up. So the white's now above the green. A huge bounce, but it shows you how these trading ranges work, right? So you get to the top end of the range, top end of the range, okay, we're at the bottom, we're in the bottom, boom, you might want to buy, okay, you're at the top of the range. It really works as simple as that. So um, while the range is narrowed, it did hit the bottom and we're seeing a little bit of bounce up. So this hopefully shows you, again, how you can use trading ranges. You want to use it outside of big events. Remember, we were talking about Coinbase and what was going on regulatory wise. Um, with them going after some of these companies. Uh, but still, uh, the trading ranges work outside of those big events so that if you're trying to plan your trades, um, it can be a little bit more helpful to be able to see, well, where is it at? And it gives you a better short-term view. That's it for today, and we'll see you back tomorrow.